Hello people, this is Bud. So what has happened uh, since uh, the last video, uh, the la this day? Well, uh, um, I was wrong in the last video. I was very, very wrong. That is one thing I know now. Uh, I will explain that. I also got a new keyboard. Uh, do you want to hear? Uh, I, I really suck at this. Uh, red switches it actually feels uh, great to, to type on when you just type text like this it's it's really nice but uh, it is a 60% uh, uh, keyboard meaning that it is uh, yeah everyone knows what that is I, I don't want to be that guy uh, it's a 60% it's it's really small it doesn't have uh, function keys it doesn't have page up and page down and end, uh, it doesn't have a uh, print screen, doesn't have arrow keys. Uh, and I I, I never, <laughs> never really wanted a keyboard like this, but it was a really good price for it. Um, so I thought, why, why not? And it, it kind of looks good. And I, I also wanted to try red switches. I never done that. And th that, that seems like a much better fit for me than the blue switches I, I used to use because I, I, I am a violent uh, uh, typer. Um, so uh, I, I got this, but as I just explained, let, let's bring up an image of it also. I think this, this is stuff that people like to, to hear about and, and see, so why not? Some consumer uh, uh, specials here with, with uh, Bud, you know? Um, let's see, open, I think it's called Del Taco, Del, Ta Del Taco, hey, Taco Friday in Sweden, It's that has become like a modern tradition by the way, I don't think this is known outside of Sweden that we, in Sweden, uh, tacos is like, th that's the normy normy food number one to eat uh, tacos on friday it uh, and normies in sweden that is called the uh, svenne banan like <laughs> svenne banana brain you know <laughs> uh, and they they eat taco every friday i also like tacos uh, it's kind of weird uh, but but that's a thing and and this uh, company that creates these keyboards is called del taco <laughs> del taco gaming is uh, the brand here that they, they they seem to be a quite good um company uh, that that isn't really a gaming keyboard company they they do more like server rack accessories and stuff like that so i want deltaco.se or something yeah here producer uh, tangent board, keyboard, Del Taco Gaming, Del Taco game, Del Gaming. Um, here it is. This is how it looks like, uh, and it's like insane. This LED lighting is is very ridiculous. It's um, yeah, yeah, it's like entering a. Uh, uh, Carnival when you turn this on it, it it's very bright and it's billions of colors. Uh, it's incredible. I don't use it at all. I've turned it off uh, and then it looks uh, quite nice actually you can uh, the, because um, the, the print there is no printing. It's just like um, a trans, trans I don't know that there, there is like uh, I, I find this uh, uh, um, whole mechanical keyboard stuff it's it, to me it's kind of uh, or it's very cringe actually like b being obsessed with and collecting keyboards and stuff like that and buying plastic keycaps for like 200 dollars for a set of, of keycaps and stuff like that it's it, it's it's embarrassing it, it really is uh, and and uh, like making up these uh, well, yeah that's called yeah it, it probably say it here Uh, yeah, double injection keycaps. I, I'm not sure what that means, but it has something to do, I think, with how the characters are printed. 
uh, and you you can barely see them uh, when you turn off the the LED, LED lighting, and I like that. Um, but let's have a look here at the layout. Uh, it's completely useless this keyboard uh, when you don't have error. Even yeah, I'm a Vim user. I can yeah, I can live without arrow keys. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes you just need arrow keys when you. Sometimes you need arrow keys on the web. Sometimes you need it in other applications. I noticed like several times that uh, goddamn I need arrow keys, you know. And to to you can see the arrow keys here: left, down, up, and right here. The, uh, the uh, and this is like on a hardware level. These are actual arrow keys, and you activate that layer by pressing function here and shift and then it uh, goes into a, the arrow key layer and then this will be uh, activated and I think it actually it seems like it's activated even if I would reboot the computer it will still be the arrow keys here uh, and that is completely useless it's it, it's uh, you cannot use this uh, arrow key functionality since there is there are no indicators here. I'm not sure maybe if I uh, could install the for, uh, firmware uh, setting thing, maybe I can set like an indicator for that, but, but I don't think I can. Maybe on Windows you can see in the system tray or something what, what uh, uh, if you have that mode enabled, but I, I cannot see that at all. Uh, and it, has, it, it did happen to me a couple of times uh, now when I was trying this out. Uh, that the, the arrow key layer was active without me knowing and this key Even if it looks completely useless here on the Swedish layout It isn't if you have a US layout activated which I of course have because the Swedish layout the Nordic layout That's I hate I hate it so much a very evil person designed the Nordic keyboard layout But I have made a video about that maybe more videos about that in the past I will I will not go go down that uh, rant uh, path now. So let's just uh, Say that I, I I hate it with a passion So I, I use US layout um, And what this key is on a normal uh, keyboard layout is uh, slash um, which is something that you you type all the time when you are especially on a, on a on a Linux or Unix system, you know, because it's the path separator, and everyone uses slash even on a, in in a web browser. You need to type it all the all the time. Uh, but if that is the arrow key, and if let's say you are in a terminal, maybe we can emulate this uh, issue here. Because I can still activate that layer. I haven't found a way to like disable it, but it's not like you press that function and shift by mistake. But let's say we, we type here uh, a directory, um, git, whatever, and then now I'm activating that uh, layer. And now I want to press, uh, and, and let's say I did this a couple of hours ago, because that's how it works. It, it just sits there and it's activated. Now I press uh, slash. And then nothing happens uh, because it actually uh, uh, use, presses up here. Now nothing happened, but many times something actually happens. I thought it would something would happen here. I guess not. Uh, but many times things happen uh, because in the terminal, for instance, it, it uh, browses my, my uh, history here. Uh, when I press up button and it does that uh, it kind of auto completes if I have typed something and I press up it, it, it tries to find something in the history that matches that Wh whatever that's a different video I guess uh, so, so that's extremely annoying when that happens and, and, and it happened like 10 times or something uh, even with me knowing what, what was going on I, I by mistake constantly did this uh, so <laughs> you cannot use that uh, that arrow, and then you don't have arrow keys uh, basically so that's one thing another thing uh, that is uh, completely uh, stupid with this sure it is the Swedish Nordic layout uh, the layout from hell uh, but they have changed um, one thing and I on, I think there is only one thing that is uh, different from the Swedish layout the Nordic layout uh, uh, on this part of the keyboard uh, because yeah, there are no arrow keys or anything on, on a normal keyboard. I guess the function button here, but there is nothing really on, on a normal keyboard uh, uh, there. Otherwise, 
Well, there usually is like a Windows key. There is no right side Windows key and, and I'm completely fine with that. And I'm actually glad that this function key is located here instead of like on the ThinkPad I just got my new computer. It's located on the control position here and everything here is shifted. It's like an extra key uh, uh, here. But everyone who got a later ThinkPad knows what, what I, I'm talking about, but you can change it in BIOS. So. Uh, the function key becomes control and control becomes function and then everything is fine, whatever. Uh, so this is a much better location for the function key. Uh, but otherwise this is a completely normal uh, um, Swedish layout here, uh, except this guy. You see this is the uh, location for the escape key because you don't have that row. I think that is the most uh, annoying thing with these uh, um, 60% layouts uh, that they don't have that uh, top row here. Why, why not, you know? I, I, but that, I don't think that category exists. There, of course there exists like special keyboards and, and you can build a custom keyboard with, uh, uh, what, what is it then? One, two, three, four, five, six rows. I, I would, that would be really nice. Uh, but whatever, we, I don't have that on this. Um, so what they have done here is put the escape key here next to the one key and everyone who has a, a English or, or US keyboard now if you look at what key is located there uh, I don't think you even have to look because you know that this is where tilde and backtick is located by default also extremely it, it, it's like they hate uh, Unix users the, these Del Taco guys so you can you you cannot write a tilde with this and even if I activate uh, US layout on this, uh, I still can't use tilde here because it is like hard. This is the escape key. Uh, it, it is the escape key. It isn't that tilde key. I think you understand what I mean. Uh, so that was <laughs> a huge problem as well. And uh, just to, for the record here, tilde is here. Uh, and that's the default position on, on the Swedish keyboard. Uh, it's one of the characters on the, of this key. Uh, you also have uh, carrot and double quote. No, it's not double quote, I think. May, or maybe it is. I'm starting to forget these special characters on the Swe Swedish layout. I haven't used it in like six years. Uh, um, so, uh, but I didn't throw the keyboard away. I actually like the keyboard a lot uh, because this is easily fixed uh, I, and I didn't even know that I had already fixed some of the issues uh, that uh, that I have here. And there were a thing now, just before I started this video, I realized I would like to add one more thing, but now I have forgotten what I wanted to remap. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I will probably <laughs> get uh, remembered soon. But there were something. Whatever. Okay. Because I made a video. It's, it, it's one... It's a video that I kind of, uh, that I guess I should uh, make a new version of. Uh, this is not the new version of that video. Um, I don't know, maybe we can find it quickly here. Uh, Bud Labs keyboard, I don't know, YouTube. I haven't uh, configured, uh, um, here it is. It's a really, the, the stuff I show in this is, is really useful, but it's such a bad video. I have the worst energy ever in this video. It's, it's, you get, you kind of get sad by watching this, by listening to me. I, 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 I don't know what was going on here. I don't remember now. It's, it's like, well, it's just a year ago or a year and a half, but there were something that day. I, I wasn't uh, in a good, good mood. I just wanted to get this vi video done. Uh, I remember there were some, some, issues making the video uh, so I had to redo it like three times or something and I have very low en energy in this uh, I should try to redo this because I show some some interesting things here that is not often talked about or a few people use this but it is actually great uh, I'm not um, talking here about my own script here uh, but um, configuring a keyboard uh, using uh, um, a barely remember what this is called, XKB, which is like the built-in vanilla uh, X uh, server way of managing the keyboard. So it is, 
it is like um, you don't need any extra programs basically if you if you understand how to use this uh, you don't need like x mod map or 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 x escape you can do a lot of things with this actually it, it's very powerful but it's also extremely confusing there is almost no documentation it's super strange it, it, the whole system is really weird but when you figure out how it works it is actually quite great and it it is almost uh, nice to to use it uh, and when I did this, because I I, I have like a special, uh, where did that go now? Del Taco. Del Taco. God damn it, we lost Del Taco. Uh, Since I am uh, a Swedish uh, man, 100% 100, 100 all the time, every day, uh, forever, you know, uh, of course, I, 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 <laughs> I haven't sold my whole soul to uh, the American uh, um, evil, you know, uh, I, I, I am Swedish and I need my Swedish characters. Uh, I need the O, I need the Ö, uh, and I need the Ä. Uh. Um, so, um, I use a special layout uh, that is called uh, the Swedish layout US. And that is the US layout. But then uh, on, on layer 3, these are, uh, O, Ö, uh, uh, are, um, you can use them. And layer 3 on Nordic keyboards, uh, I don't think this is a default key on, on US key keyboards either, and, or maybe f it is, but few p they don't really use, th use this, because there isn't anything useful on this layer, layer 3, but Nordic uh, layout users and German layout users and, and a lot of other alternative layout users, uh, they use this Alt-G-R, I think it's alternative graphics so you can use al alternative graphic symbols or something that's what it means uh, but what it really means is that you access uh, the third layer of the keyboard and the first layer of the keyboard that is like lowercase uh, uh, character so uh, when you just press a key uh, without any layers you just get the lowercase a here for example the second layer is uh, accessed by pressing shift and then you get a capital uh, A or on the numbers of course you get the special uh, symbol there. Uh, but Alt G R uh, that access the third layer and as you can see some of these keys they have uh, three uh, characters on them and that means that those uh, uh, characters are accessed by holding Alt G R and that's the default way of, of the Nordic uh, uh, layout. And it's kind of insane because many of these uh, characters are, are characters you need to use all the time, like backslash, like uh, curly braces and uh, square brackets also, I think, uh, and pipe symbol. It's crazy. It's very stupid uh, to have that on the third layer. And uh, to be fair, and I think this is true for, for most people who don't use like uh, Swedish uh, uh, Facebook or something like that where you communicate a lot on, in Swedish I, I never do that really I sometimes I need to write a mail or, or whatever some address with the Swedish characters but very very seldom actually I, I need to use these or uh, uh. so it actually makes sense to have that on the third layer so that is what I've been using using this alt gr uh, to, to print or, uh, uh, when I need them uh, but I didn't remember that I had also set up so that I could use this key here, um, which is also um, not included on, on US keyboards. Instead, they have a long uh, shift here. So this key uh, is like an extra key if you use the, the US layout. Because the characters here is actually a pipe symbol. Yeah, pipe symbol is uh, available on, on two uh, places on the on the Nordic layout. It's it's insane. The layout is completely insane. The, it nothing makes any sense with it. And then you have the angle brackets here, which is a convenient position for them. Actually, you you can uh, press the left one on layer one and shift to get the right one. It's it's kind of nice to write HTML with this. I remember from from my youth. 
uh, but it's not it's perfectly fine to use the US uh, angle brackets also it, it also makes a lot of sense since it's uh, kind of grouped with the other brackets here uh, there's so much more <laughs> logic with where you have like parentheses and then you have brackets and then you have curly brackets and everything is just it makes sense here nothing makes sense whatever this is an extra key on the nordic uh, keyboard uh, and apparently i had uh, uh, already done that it's it is active here in my bud kb uh, uh, file here include level 3 lsgt switch and lsgt means less than greater than because that is what that key is called if it's available on a keyboard so this is a pre-built macro into the xkb system I, you don't have to do add anything else except this line in your config file here and then you can use that key for for the third layer and the, i have i have had this active all along i have also have had this active and that I talk about it in that video I had completely forgot but I, I, I have have had this all, all along here and never used it at all uh, like uh, vim uh, keys on the third layer so so uh, pressing alt g r or or this less than greater than key to access the third layer then I can do h j k and l as the arrow keys basically but I never, I, I haven't used that since I made that video. I never, never used it. I had, and I had completely forgotten I'd, I had done that. But that was exactly what I wanted here now when I don't have uh, arrow keys. Uh, so I started using that. Uh, and I used, uh, by the way, uh, for some reason, I don't use that less than greater than either. I never press this key to access layer three. I always use this because they have, I'm, my brain is just wired to use this to access that layer. And, and that's a very inconvenient hand position when you want to write these Swedish keys uh, or Swedish characters. You press thumb here and then use the rest of the A. It's a very bad uh, hand position. It's much better to use this and then uh, to type these. And I, I basically only use uh, uh, layer 3 for that. I also have euro sign here. Uh, and I think I have like trademark and, and copyright or something like that on C. Uh, but uh, uh, when, when trying to navigate using arrow keys and holding alt g r here that was almost painful i i don't have the largest hands either and uh, I, I and even if i did it would probably be even more painful uh, uh, so then i realized did, did i do something with this and I, I i was just about to set it up and then i saw that hey this is already active and it was just working i could just hold this and then use the arrow keys here on h a k l and it it's so much better than this function shift shenanigans here i really would like to disable that and i i, I wonder i i saw that you can download this uh, the software because it wasn't included uh, I, I guess it's only a download here but I'm 100% sure it's a Windows only program thing here. So I have been thinking about uh, installing Windows somewhere uh, and just to see if I can disable this on a hardware level, these annoying uh, uh, layers and maybe configure some more because of course to use the F1, F2, F3 keys, you press uh, function and then one, two, three and so on. Uh, also, I I use uh, like print screen, but I only use it because I have bound a, a, a key binding to, to yeah to take a screenshot and stuff like that. I think I can live completely without print screen and just bind that command to, to some something else like super super D or something because I don't think I have anything there. Uh, wh whatever. Uh, but I actually use the function keys sometimes. But I, I, I don't think that's a problem to use that function key, uh, FN key to press the function key, but <laughs> you get what I mean. Uh, all in all, I am very happy with this keyboard. Uh, the, the owner, uh, because I bought it used, so, uh, but it's just like the laptop I got, uh, which was in pristine cons condition. It was like, I, I, was, I was surprised. It looked nice on, on the, uh, in, in, in the, when it was presented on the auction site. 
uh, it looked really nice. And, and uh, I think that is kind of important when you buy uh, like used products, you don't want the, some, some uh, especially like uh, technology things like computers and key, keyboards in particular. I, I never done this before because I, it, it is a bit disgusting, you know, some, someone is, yeah, I don't want to think about it. But uh, uh, the presentation of this one uh, as well, the keyboard I, I bought here looked really, really nice. Uh, and he also wrote that I didn't I didn't like the lay I couldn't use this uh, uh, sixty percent layout it wasn't for me everything is nice I like the the LED lighting he wrote and, and the the switches and everything but I I, I cannot use this sixty uh, percent it was too hardcore kind of thing he wrote and uh, in between the lines you could read that yeah this guy has basically not used this. Uh, he also wrote that he, he silenced the spacebar, and that is nice. And you can really, uh, I, you can probably hear it here. When I'm pre pressing space, it, it's a bit different sound. This, this is the characters, but the caps lock key have, have a very loud uh, and hollow uh, sound, or very. But it's different. It's different, and almost all of these, uh, uh, like shift. Different tab, different enter. Also quite loud, but it's I think it's okay. Space. I don't know. Uh, I I wonder if I shouldn't uh, see if I can silence all all, all those uh, um, keys like backspace and yeah backspace is also loud. Ah. Uh, I should fix that. Uh, and I think I will. It's just adding like rubber rings uh, uh, between the switches and, and the caps, uh, or something like that. Whatever, because that doesn't really affect the uh, typing speed if you add it to these modifiers and, and like uh, backspace and enter and stuff like that. Uh, I think it, it might get annoying to add it to, to these keys. And I but, but they also sound completely different than the, the the normal characters here. Uh, and I don't think he silenced it. I haven't opened the, removed the keycaps and looked at it, but I don't think so. So all in all, I am uh, I am really happy with it, and it feels now it feels like uh, a, a perfect fit uh, because I am you. I I am, my brain is uh, wired to H A K N L for for arrow keys. That that I I don't have to. Uh, it, it's not it, it's nothing really. And if you use Vim, you can definitely use like a keyboard like this. Uh, if you wire it up like I did with a modifier here, and you kind of need a modifier here on the left side somewhere, and this just makes sense, and it, it, this all almost makes sense for like a US person then to get this extra key here and use that as modifier. I actually think that is the best one to to do it on. You could do it on caps lock, but I actually, yeah, maybe caps lock also makes sense. Um, because in my current setup here, I think we can see it in in that. Uh, uh, um, keyboard file here <clears throat> which I have here now I use those arrow keys because this I haven't configured this in in sublime yet you cannot press tab to <coughs> to switch listing you have to use the arrow keys so now I'm using that uh, layer 3 and pressing J to sh switch here to load KB uh, uh, project and let's see I found a way uh, I also present that in the video how to use caps lock uh, uh, as uh, control and uh, escape and you can do all of that here with uh, xkb and that is great you don't need that escape escape uh, program which a lot of people use which actually is a bit slow this is faster you will notice that pressing escape in in the text editor for example switches to to normal mode here faster it is noticeable uh, 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 to me at least and it probably is because i don't think that escape uh, program is is uh, particularly good um, so I think I made like a costume mode for that here and this also bounds uh, control uh, to uh, caps lock so if I hold control uh, or hold caps lock then it acts as a control key and I, I, actually, I actually use that and I have gotten used to it but I don't think a lot of people is used to using caps lock as control. And if you aren't, then you could instead use it to be a layer three um, uh, modifier instead of having that less than great than uh, now that I think about it. But I can have both. 
Uh, and sure, I got control, you know, your control is here, so it's not like super important to have it on caps lock, but it's, it is actually a better position because this, this control key, it, it, it's a terrible, uh, no matter what, what combination you are doing with control here, you, you, you are very far from home, so to speak. Uh, well, I, I know there is a technique. I never, I never, um, I, I can't do it. I think I have two small hands. Uh, using the palm of your hand uh, to press control, uh, that way you will not lose uh, uh, ho home row position. I can't use. I can't do that. Uh, I, I just can't. It, it, it. But I guess that's if you ma if you manage that, that technique, uh, that's probably really nice too. Uh, but I think uh, I rather have it on caps lock. Whatever, keyboard, keyboard talk. It's it's fun with things, uh, actually sometimes. And I got this cheap, as I said, uh, really cheap, much cheaper than I I, I don't know what what it cost, uh, but it's uh, th this is pro I don't know I don't know. Let's not speculate. Let let's not make a fool out of myself because maybe it is really cheap and I was I I, I am the fool probably because I get fooled all the time. I fool myself all the time. That's that's the thing because that's the rest of this video here. I I almost bricked the computer, the new computer I got here. I, I, I got, I, it was, it was, it was not fun at all. And I ne I also needed to get out uh, uh, to do stuff. I, I really, I couldn't fix the issue. Uh, I needed to take the bus and go places. And I was like, oh no, no, I have, I have a bricked computer at home. It's not good. It's not good. So I had to go to, to good old, uh, um, hamburger, uh, uh, restaurant, uh, place, uh, and, and take it easy for a while. <laughs> I almost bought a pack of cigarettes. I, I haven't smoked in, in years, and but I, I really wanted to do that. It, it, it was one of the most stressful things that has happened in a long while, uh, which I guess is a very good sign that my life is kind of good, you know, uh, if, if that is the worst thing that can happen. So, uh, and also I, I fixed it. It wasn't, it was nothing. It was a nothing burger. Uh, because what, what happened? And I'm not sure if it is fixed now, uh, the, the original issue that I tried to fix. You know, it, this is Arch, Arch user, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, finding issues, fixing them poorly and creates like four new issues. That, that, that's how it goes. And then you fix them and you create four new and then you, you get you get a beautiful uh, bonsai tree of issues that you can just uh, uh, curate for forever. It's it's it, that is what Zen is about, you know. Uh, <laughs> I bought this computer for a very specific reason or two specific reasons. One was that the old computer's fan was giving me uh, tinnitus, like actual tinnitus, and I have, I, uh, it, it have already done that, but I felt it, it I, 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 <laughs> I'm going insane. These fan noises uh, don't go away when I go, asleep, go to sleep. It's not good for me. Uh, that was one reason, the important reason. Another uh, important reason was that it constantly uh, flickered the screen. I have talked about this uh, in the past, that it sometimes just turned off the screen that I have connected to a docking station. Extremely annoying. Uh, not that important as the tinnitus uh, inducing fan noise, but still very, very, very annoying. Uh, so the, uh, that was what I was hoping this setup would, would fix, and it did. It just worked fine. But then all of a sudden it started with that same issue with the monitor. It started flickering, and it was actually much worse here on this computer, this new one, because it seemed like it was both uh, doing the same thing as the old computer, because it, which was not related to, you know, turning off the screen after one minute. Uh, but this... ThinkPad here, it was both doing that, and both of them seemed random. I it, and sometimes extremely frequent, like it could happen several times in a minute. It started turning on and off the monitor. I was not, no, 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 no. This I don't want this, and you were working fine like yesterday. So I just in, in, 
started the googling around you know and found some some boomer lenovo uh, uh, forums everyone was oh, it's the auto update in lenovo software center <laughs> but then i realized maybe there is something with a, some driver can i update the driver and i remembered I, I read somewhere that you can actually now quite easily update drivers on linux uh, which and that used to be a hassle before you know and uh, and found this. This is like a somewhat new thing. I have never used this before. Uh, firmware update daemon. It's like a service uh, that you install that that uh, it does every everything actually. It, it's kind of uh, a great uh, command line utility or use GNOME's uh, the front end for it. But the command line here is it, you, it's super easy to use. And it automatically downloads the firmware and install it and stuff like that. Uh, that's at least uh, what, what, <laughs> what I understood because I only read this part and I only did this and okay, okay, and it's updating and now I need to reboot. No problem. Okay, I'm rebooting now. Great. Now the monitor is going to get fixed. There no problem anymore. And it rebooted. It got the hello, welcome to ThinkPad screen, you know, and the like a progress bar started to install uh, flash the BIOS. It, it um, took some time. It was like, I was like, I wonder what, what exactly, what firmware did I, <laughs> I didn't even know what I, what I had installed. I didn't, I, I was like, whatever, this will be fine. This is great. And then it finished that firmware update. Uh, <laughs> and then it rebooted itself again. Then it just got stuck on that hello uh, Lenovo ThinkPad uh, uh, screen, and I was like, okay, okay, maybe maybe it needs to reconfigure itself here. No, no problem, no worries. It's just a BIOS, you know. No, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then it uh, said, okay, I'm trying network boot here. Uh, hold on. And then it took like two minutes, and then it said, no, sorry, sorry, bud, I can I don't know what this is. something is messed up. Uh, here, here, here is here, here is a boot menu uh, with no entries except network boot. I was like, no, 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 no! This is not good. This is very, very bad. This is very, very, very bad. So I started up the other computer and and um, realized that that I really am an idiot, you know. Uh, sometimes I'm smart, smart guy, smart bud. Sometimes I'm very, very stupid bud. Cannot be trusted with important things. Uh, started the other computer, uh, kept on reading here, uh, and you will soon see in, uh, something like this uh, the title. But you, of course, when you update, uh, uh, how, how this works is that it, when it needs to uh, install like firmware updates uh, to BIOS and stuff like that. It modifies the, the boot uh, bootloader. Uh, this uh, program does that. And uh, if you have EFI, which I, I'm really glad that uh, at least I had that and not just did this without e e EFI. I'm not sure what happens then. Or maybe something, maybe it wouldn't work at all then. But whatever, I had EFI installed. Uh, so it had replaced my, my normal uh, boot uh, uh, um, bootloader basically with, with a custom one that installs this firmware. And apparently it doesn't reinstall the old one, which is uh, kind of a weird thing that it doesn't do that automatically. But uh, I, I panicked here really because uh, I realized, hey, maybe there's something messed up because I have a, uh, have a advanced uh, EFI uh, setup, of course. Uh, I followed some some guide on online how to uh, create a encrypted y U E F I uh, um, installation, and not only encrypting like uh, the the system, also encrypting the the boot uh, the boot uh, partition as well. And I thought, no, 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 this, maybe it's trying now to boot and it, because I, I didn't understand this first, that it had created its own EFI partition thing or whatever that's called. I hate EFI, by the way. Uh, it, um, I thought it was trying to, to that it hadn't, uh, hadn't finished uh, installing that firmware and that it now needed to boot, you know, uh, but it couldn't boot because I had an encrypted boot. Uh, and I was like, now it's stuck. So if you, God damn it! But um, I, uh, since I just recently installed here, I ha had the, the USB with the installation media and everything, so I could, and that worked, and and uh, that made me feel a lot better because, uh, yeah, worst case scenario, I just used the USB, whatever. But uh, 
then I realized this is what has happened, of course. It have just added its own uh, EFI and I need to uh, uh, replace it with old old boot and everything should work, you know, and the encryption and everything should be there. And it was, it, I got it working. I, as you can see, I am on, on the same system. Uh, the only thing is that because when it failed to boot the first time there, when it started that the network booting thing that this didn't work, it also, uh, the, the mute button turned red. It's like a LED in, in the F1 key on, on the laptop. Uh, a LED, a red LED turned on there <laughs> and uh, that is still on. But uh, whatever, I think I think that can be fixed. Uh, it, whatever. <laughs> really, really, I'm just happy to be where I am now with this. So, yeah, that's, that was really, really stupid. Really, really stupid, idiot. Why not just read? And, and I, I would have, uh, everything would have been fine if I had uh, read longer than here and not just entering these commands. What, what, who does that, you know? But, but I was uh, just upset that it started blinking the monitor. And now, actually, since I, I did this update here, I haven't encountered this now. But it usually takes like an hour or two before it starts uh, flickering. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I will get to the bottom with that that uh, stuff. But uh, maybe maybe it's fixed now. I fixed it. I'm a computer genius. Um, so the, yeah, that's, that was a stupid thing. But another very, very stupid thing um, was what I showed you in the last, or told you in the last video. That, that is, I don't know, I, I am in some, some kind of weird uh, mode here. I, I am, at the, as I said, I am in a very creative space and I am in a good mood and, and things seems to just fix themselves like this and I got this. I got the laptop. I have been waiting to get a good laptop on, online here uh, on uh, on this uh, Swedish eBay like uh, thing for 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 like months for for six months or something. I've been keeping an eye op open and uh, always get someone someone uh, janks them just when the auction is is about to to, to yeah, go in my direction so to speak but this one i got it i got it cheap i got the keyboard I, everything seems to work i got the, i made the programs that working things work but i have a, I had also like messed things up here and also in the last video i told i said i i said that i had have um, had the best id ever to add uh, to add Sublime projects as a little GUI module here, a GTK module to the GVIM window. How cool wouldn't that be? And you know, it's super easy. All you have to do, all you have to do is, is um, let's say, give me a piece of NFM. I have not configured anything or any hotkeys or anything here. Don't I have piece of NFM here? Office, accessories. I thought we installed that uh, like yesterday or something. Whatever. Ah, that's right. This is the idiot. I have to fix this menu or whatever. So, sorry for this. Sorry, I, I got a bit there. Um, all I wanted to do was open some files. So we got, we can, there we open that guy, we open that guy, we open that guy. And then we get these tabs. This is what I showed you in the last video, or tabs. We get this listing here of the different files. And I said, all we have to do here to get a vertical tab bar is just adding a GTK element. And then we can just redirect these, uh, these menu items. It should be, it should be super easy, guys. It should be very, very easy. I can, I could probably do this in a day, right? <laughs> no, no. And I also, I also said, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I also said, yeah, and they also, uh, the Vim here, uh, that's just Vim in, inside a GTK uh, source view module somehow, you know, that, that shouldn't be difficult to just uh, use any terminal editor in that game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you cannot do that, bud, uh, because this GVim, I also had no idea what this is, uh, like, Oh, is it GNU Vim or GNOME Vim? I don't know. It's GUI Vim. And it is Vim. It is, that's why I couldn't really figure out where it came from. Because it comes from Vim, the official uh, Vim repositories. Uh, 
Here it is. Uh, they they have always provided a GUI uh, version of Vim. It's just that no one, for some reason, <laughs> seems to use it. Wonder why. Uh, and the source code for GUI Vim is like completely insane. And apparently, the source code for Vim, the whole Vim, is is like terrible. And it, it, that is common knowledge. And if you didn't know, you probably didn't, since no one commented that told me how wrong I was. What a stupid idea this is. Uh, you cannot add GUI elements to GUI, <laughs> GTK uh, elements to GUI Vim here. I have no idea. I have no idea how this menu is generated, where these items come from, where what, what they are, a anything. I cannot find anything here wh where to start at all. I, and I will not do <laughs> I will definitely not do it. This, this code, this source code is completely, <laughs> completely bonkers. Uh, here, here is an article from 2015 by someone explaining why why he thinks uh, NeoVim is far superior to Vim and what the differences are and stuff like that. He also explains that he is an experienced programmer and uh, that uh, he, he, in his opinion, C uh, Vim is the worst C code base uh, that exists. And I actually believe him. And I also believe that they have cleaned it up a lot here since he wrote this article. I think so. I, I'm not sure, but I think so. Uh, and But uh, it's still a uh, complete mess. Um, when he wrote this, he, he say here that it's mixed tabs and spaces. And, and I very much believe that. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of... of um, of <laughs> formatting a, a standard that they are following. It's, it's very ran random. Uh, some things are very, very old uh, and uh, a lot of, of stuff supporting things like Amiga, GUI systems and stuff like that. That's the thing with the GUI, by the way, that it's written, everything is in this GUI.c file. Uh, which like supports all of these uh, frameworks at the same time by using magical uh, uh, if defs uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, uh, it have like a GUI GTK also, uh, but I, I haven't figured out anything uh, about what's what here. It's it's uh, it's a very very <laughs> annoying uh, code base to work on and something I, I just don't want to do for a fun thing like this. So I will not do that. I will not add the the, the Sublime project thing into GVIM. Instead, I will make a standalone thing out of this instead. Uh, I will not waste any time at all on GVIM here. Uh, and th this was really... Uh, I, 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 I didn't have the most respect for for vim as it was i uh, but i think it's it, it is a good and you know i use the uh, qt browser i use hakl there now on on my arrows i just said so but uh, vim is a lot more than that and and all of that is also great and i use vim in sublime i, I actually i am I, I i think vim vim is a very good modal editing system i really do but uh, this source code is, is terrible and i kind of lost uh, respect for, for with Vim a lot after reading that and I started to think what, what who are the people who I do this and uh, and the the charity where thing I, I tried to find some data on on how much uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, assistant and official aid received here to Uganda uh, because that's related to that charity where whatever let's not get into that but Vim is a weird project, uh, uh, and apparently NeoVim, uh, one of their main reasons uh, to, to start NeoVim was that they wanted a, a new code base, basically, so you could actually improve it and, and extend it and, and remove crap that they didn't uh, want in NeoVim. For example, the GUI. They don't provide a GUI with, with uh, the, the, the official NeoVim uh, um, repository. But they do provide uh, a, a really good API, so you can easily use NeoVim as a backend for your uh, for your own uh, uh, GUI frontend, and that has led to uh, a lot of, of uh, NeoVim NeoVim fr frontends, um, which is a m so much smarter way to do this than, than what Vim is doing here. 
And and I also mentioned in that last video that this is the simplest GUI in the world. You know, it's it's just a toolbar. It's just a toolbar. That's all all they have: a toolbar and a menu bar. And sure, you can do this weird thing. I think that's a built-in GTK thing. I, I I don't know if that is what tier off menu thing is. I never used this, but whatever. It, it it's the simplest UI ever. <laughs> it shouldn't and it shouldn't be a big deal to do what I uh, thought I w wanted to do. Uh, but the reason it is so simple is because probably I cannot be the first one who have thought about, yeah, maybe we should have a, it would be nice with an input box, maybe a search that is GUI or whatever, you know. But no one have managed to, to add it. Or I don't know, maybe there is like a find. No, that's just an extra window here. But that that's a whole, uh, probably 8,000 lines of C to do this. <laughs> it's it's insane and it's it's kind of embarrassing and it's embarrassing both to the vim project but it's embarrassing to me that i was like <laughs> that is what is this gvim ah, that's a quirk little gtk application <laughs> no idea what i'm talking about ever uh, or what i'm doing so yeah the, the, i'm an honest honest guy i have no problems admitting when i'm wrong i <laughs> Uh, I actually think it's quite funny when, especially when it's things like this. Uh, some things can be serious, you know, when you're wrong about. Uh, but the, then it's even more important to admit that you are wrong and and change your ways. You know, I was thinking about that. The, the only way to ascend, in a way, is is to realize that you are an idiot. Uh, otherwise, you you will <laughs> you will stay an idiot forever, uh, and. You, I probably will do that. I, I think, I think I'm a chronic, chronic idiot actually. But uh, I think it's a good, good thing to do to admit when you're wrong uh, uh, and uh, realize when you are, instead of just protecting, <laughs> because uh, that seems to be like the normal thing to do uh, right now in in discourse, you know, uh, about whatever, about GTK three, about politics, about music about movies brands whatever people just oh this is a great movie because i liked it when i was 10 years so no it's a crap movie it's a, this new version is really really bad you should you should not promote that you should not wear the t-shirt when you are 35 years old it's very embarrassing stop doing that you know but no this is me this is my character that's not me, at least. I, I realized things like that a long, long, long while ago. Whatever. It feels like I'm, I'm, I'm on the schizo posting uh, uh, spectrum here, and I should probably stop recording. Random video, random rant. Have a great day. Bye, bye, bye.